what is our final authority? And I learned, and I think I was remembered, because I forgot this, um, but the Mormons will tell you, oh, yeah, we believe in the Word of God as, as, as an authority. Amen. You know, the, they'll talk about the reverence of the Word of God, uh, the authority of the Word of God. But they, they do not believe in the Word of God as the authority. They do not. And they will openly tell you that. They, 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 you have to ask it. Because they'll skirt around things to, to, to try to make it sound like, oh, we believe the same. They do not believe the same. Uh, whether it's Joseph Smith or anybody else uh, could come along and say something, and they have to acknowledge that that could be the word of God. When acknowledging the debate, there's a side note, i got to keep going, about the fallacies of Joseph Smith and all the predictions that he got wrong. And it, their response was, well, we as men are feeble. We could get things wrong. But yet you're going to study after this. man. I mean, just it's insane. Uh, they had to stay at a topic so they couldn't go on those things. But I am so thankful that we have the word of God as the authority. Right. It's so nice that we don't have to wonder. We don't have to guess. Right. Amen. We know that the first recorded words of Satan were putting doubt upon the word of God in the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3. We know, we know, we know that the Bible is the inspired word of God, 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction of righteousness. We know that. That's important. Because if you don't have that foundation, all of a sudden you're going to be Jehovah's Witness, you're going to be Mormon, you're going to be whatever comes along, because any new revelation could be anything. And that's how they look at things. Turn to Psalms chapter 12, verse 6. We know that God told us that he would preserve his word. I've looked at this, these two scriptures a hundred different ways. I've pondered them. I've, 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 I've meditated on them. And, 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 and I cannot look at the word of God as the word of God. It's just the word of God. It's not nothing else. It's the word of God. And it says, in Psalm chapter 12, verse 6, it says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver so tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. What words of God are preserved from this generation forever? The same, the same word of God that we're going to be judged out of at the end of life. Right. Or on judgment day, the better way to put it. Did God inspire his words? Yes. Or did God just inspire his general message? No, he inspired his words. Did God inspire his general thought line? No, he inspired his words. Did God inspire his ideas? No, he inspired his words. Did God inspire, uh, uh, what did he inspire? His words. God said, the, the words of the Lord are pure words. He, he, they're, they're profitable for doctrine. They're inspired. The question now becomes, where did God preserve it? Brother Tony, would you open this message in a word of prayer, brother? Amen. We know that the word of God is important. Amen. Moses knew that the word of God was important. <laughs> it's the foundation for literally everything that we believe. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 26. Moses knew the importance of the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 31, I'm um, sorry, 31, verse 24. And it came to pass when Moses had an end of writing the words of the law in a book, let's say that they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. That was the first passages of Scripture that were ever written, literally the Word of God. And Moses is telling uh, God's people, hey, this is, these words are a witness against thee. This word is a witness against us. It is literally a mirror as we're reading it. We, we study it, we learn it, and it, it literally, <laughs> it's a reflection of, of, of uh, to showing who we are, but showing who he is. That's why Satan has made it his highest priority since the beginning of mankind to desecrate the word of God. 
We know that God has preserved his words. We know that God has inspired his words. So which version should we look to? There's like over a hundred of them. Like there's just so many of them. If we were to look at a list of all these different versions, you would find one, and this is this sounds like a joke, but it's not a joke. <clears throat> the Bonnox Bible. Literally changing the word of God to encompass urban slang specifically targeted targeting young black inner city teens. A lady by the name of P.K. McCary uh, 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 came up with this version of the Bible, as they would call it. And it was called the, the Black Bible Chronicles. Came out in September of 1993. She published the first of a two-volume set entitled Black Bible Chronicles. She explained that she wanted to create a version of the Bible that would relate to young people in the streets and insist that there is no meaning or, or loss uh, through the translation. This sounds like an SNL skit. It's about to get worse. But it's like funny, but not funny at the same time. It's like you laugh, but then you get serious real quick. <coughs> I looked at this Bible a little bit, and I wrote down the Ten Commandments given through the Abonix Bible or the Black Chronicle Bibles, and I put it next to the King James. This is, I'm not, this is not a joke. What I'm about to read is not a joke. This is actually real life what somebody has done, okay? It's going to sound like a joke. I am Lord thy God, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. That sounds familiar, right? Literally in the Black Bible Chronicles it says, I'm God, don't play me. Not a joke. Thou shalt not have any uh, graven images. The Black Bible Chronicle Bible says, <clears throat> don't be making any hood ornaments and charms out of me or like me. Thou shalt not use the a name of the Lord thy God in vain. Don't be calling me for no reason. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. This is not a joke, folks. <clears throat> this is what they call a version of the Bible. Y'all better be in church on Sunday and not just the Sundays when it's Mother's Day, Easter, and Christmas. Honor thy father and mother. Don't diss or cuss out your mama. And if you know who your daddy is, don't diss him either. Right? I mean, we're watching an SNL skit or what? Like God's glorified in any of this. Thou shalt, this is like unreal. Thou shalt not kill. Don't be going on no drive-bys. It is a mockery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. I feel stupid saying this. <laughs> Stick to your own boo. Rachel's loving this. Thou shalt not steal. These are not hard to figure out. Thou shalt not steal, right? Don't be borrowing stuff and not give it back. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy brother. Don't be snitching on the other man to save yourself. And this one's just as bad. Thou shalt not covet. Don't be eyeing your homie's crib, ride, or woman. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and as funny and not funny as that is, literally at the same time, it's literally the same. It's, it's, it's horrifying and hilarious all in one bit. But the modern day Christian will say, you know what? You need to find whatever Bible's easiest for you to read. That's, that, that's the rally cry of the modern day Christian. Well, if it's, we got to make it easy for us to read. So are we going to make it easy for the, for the teenager to read or easier for the toddler to read? Are we going to make it easier for um, uh, um, uh, uh, by, by race? Maybe, maybe Asians have a culture, so you got to put something in there for Asians. Uh, maybe you need to have a BLM-sensitive Bible. Maybe we need to have um, a, a feminist Bible. Maybe sh should we not have themed Bibles at all, because there's all kinds of themed Bibles, which is ridiculous in and of itself. All of a sudden, there's no, there's no standard anymore. It's just whatever we want to do, we'll throw it in there to fit our lifestyle. Man, you get saved or <coughs> maybe you've been saved a little while and you want to buy a new Bible, you go into the Christian bookstore, 
And you've done read Psalms 12, 6, and 7. The words of the Lord are pure words. Amen. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, from this generation forever. That means that there's a version out there that God has preserved forever. <coughs> and I could insert like 12 different verses to back that up. But we're all King James believers. We don't have to hit that so hard. Amen. But which one of these Bibles has God preserved and inspired? There's one out there called, and I hit this before in a message. This is not a joke either. Called the Queen James Version. And in 2012, a group of unnamed, right? They didn't want to put their names on this. Unnamed editors made their own version of the Word of God. They called it the Queen James Version. The front of the, 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 the book has a rainbow-colored cross. And, of course, they took out all the verses that deal with homosexuality. <coughs> I have heard at least five times in my life that the Bible didn't talk about homosexuality at all. Maybe because they got that, that version. I don't even want to call it a version. It's not even, amen. But they took out verses like Leviticus 18.22, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. But it gets 12, 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They should surely be put to death. Their blood should be upon them. Romans, you say, well, that's Old Testament. Okay, Romans 1, 27. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which was mean, and not... <clears throat> And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Amen. The Bible has a lot to say about homosexuality and how wrong it is. Amen. So the next time you hear a modern Christian say, it doesn't matter what Bible you use, right. well, then you disagree with God. Right. You literally do not know what you're talking about. And I understand that you might get saved and there, there, there's some things you need to learn and understand. I understand that. But it absolutely matters what Bible that we use. Right. <coughs> it's like saying it doesn't matter what church you go to. It does matter what church you go to. Right. I, 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 I was buying a shelf for desk off Craigslist for Rachel. One of the many, many times I was buying things off Craigslist for Rachel. And a uh, lady was inviting me out to church aggressively, which I found a little bit encouraging, you know. And uh, it was a non-denominational non -denominational church, Taylor down river somewhere. And I said, non-denominational. She said, yeah. She said, you can come as you are. I said, that's awesome. What do you guys believe there? And, she, and she's like, well, well, we, we welcome all faiths to come. She said this, all faiths to come and worship with us. We don't exclude anybody. I said, really? I said, what do you believe on salvation? She was like, well, you know, um, you'd have to ask my pastor about that. I said, can, when you get saved, can you lose your salvation? Well, you'd have to ask my pastor about that. I said, what if, what if a Muslim wants to come and worship Allah in your church? Can he do that? Well, I don't, I don't think that would be. I mean, we want him to come, but we don't really want him to worship Allah. I said, <clears throat> I said what if I'm a snake handler? Can I bring snakes in your church? And, and I want to, like, play with the snakes because that's how I, I want to worship. Would you accept somebody that wants to do that? Well, no, I don't think that would be permitted. I said, so, so it, it does matter. You don't accept everybody. You do have a statement of faith. You do believe how you get to heaven. You just don't want to advertise it. And I didn't say it as harsh as I did now, but I said all those things in a very nice way. I said, we have a church on our side that says Baptist because we believe that the Baptists are lined up with the word of God has to say. We could put non-denominational out there, but really it's just hiding the fact of what we really believe. I thank God when I'm out of town, I'm looking for a church to go to like I just did the other day. That I can find a church that believes in Holy Ghost salvation, amen, and that Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation, period. And I don't have to worry about all this other stuff. I, hey, I know what they believe because they put it on their sign. They're not hiding it. <coughs> the Jehovah's Witnesses made their own Bible on August 2nd, 1950. And oh, <coughs> when I learned that, my brother, brother's birthday is on August 2nd. And uh, I, 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 it was on a Sunday morning. I called my brother and let him know. Because it, was, it happened to be on August 2nd that day. And I said, Ryan, I just want to wish you a happy birthday. And, and congratulations. It's the same day that the Jehovah's Witnesses 
uh, 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 came up with their own Bible. They, they uh, uh, rolled it out to the world. Congratulations, it's the same day, you know. I, I enjoyed that a whole lot. Amen. <coughs> but, they, but the Jehovah's Witness Bible literally takes out all the verses uh, or changes all the verses concerning the deity of Christ and the reality of hell. How can you do that? Well, you, if you can make a black Bible or a, a gay Bible, you can do whatever you want. Whatever theme you want, you can make it and say, amen, God breathed. But God does not approve of that. And anybody with a half a brain understands that. Deuteronomy 4, 2 says, You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall I diminish aught from it. You may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. You say, that's Old Testament. It absolutely is. And, 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 and that wasn't talking about the scriptures that we have now, but the same principle applies. You want to go to New Testament words of Jesus? That's fine. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. That coincides exactly with Psalms chapter 12, 6, and 7. <clears throat> Do we serve a God that doesn't have the power to preserve his word? Do we serve a God that just doesn't understand how things deteriorate and crumble over time? And Do we serve a God that just doesn't understand that the inner street kids need a Bible that they can relate to? Is God a liar? No. Is God confused? No. Then when, when people try to change the word of God, they literally have to think in their mind, well, I have to help God because he doesn't understand. Because God's words that were written all those years ago in English in 1611 or whatever, it, it doesn't apply today. We can't understand it. God needs my help to put my urban slang in there. Or maybe, just maybe, we serve a God that... You know, that could create the entire universe out of, you know, his words. Right. That he knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah. I know I'm preaching to the choir here tonight, and amen for that. <coughs> amen. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3, 6, for I am the Lord, I change not. Revelation 1, 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Psalm 92, before the mountains were brought forth, or even uh, thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Besides the fact that the King James Bible is the only one that doesn't have a copyright on it. Amen. Now other versions every year make money off their, ver off their copyrights and their versions. Uh, clue number one. <coughs> Let's look at some scripture comparisons just for a moment. To see what the difference is all about. <coughs> turn to Luke 4.4. 4. We'll turn to four or five scriptures and then we'll close tonight. Luke chapter 4, verse 4. And I sifted through just the top 20. Just literally, there's like 100 plus scriptures that are just... And you say, well, let's just change to, so you can understand them better. Really? Really? There's not an agenda being... You, you know, Satan didn't say there's an agenda in the Garden of Eden. Mm -mm. Luke chapter 4, verse 4. Our King James Bible, the Word of God, says, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Amen. The NIV says, Jesus said, Now, follow along now. I'm going to read what the NIV says. You read it uh, in, with your own eyes what the King James says. The NIV says, Jesus answered, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone. And they end it. Huh. Why did you take out, but by every word of God? But there's no agenda. But there's no agenda, Brother Tony. To turn to 1 Corinthians 15, 47. <coughs> 1 Corinthians 15, 47. 
It says the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. We know that verse. Like we've read that a hundred times. Amen. Where the NIV says the first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. It doesn't say the Lord from heaven. You guys realize that Satan came from heaven? Just a thought. Just a thought. Look at Matthew, 19, uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. And I just picked just a few that were just, just so obvious. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. <clears throat> Our Bible says, But go ye and learn what <clears throat> that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. <clears throat> then Avi says, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call righteous but sinners. No, 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 no. Sinners to repentance. Right. Not just calling all sinners. No, no, no. We're, we're taking the heart issue out of it completely. Right. But there's no agenda. Don't worry about it. It's easy to read. That's all you need to care about. That's what Satan told Eve. 1 John 5, 7. Two more scriptures and we'll close. 1 John 5, 7. <coughs> 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. I mean, that's a pretty awesome verse. Right. I mean, you want to talk about, man, that's the Trinity right there. Like that's, that, We can look at our Bibles and say, man... That's the Godhead. But not really in the NIV. You guys following along? I'm going to read the NIV. Are you ready? For there are three that testify. Period. There are three that testify. It says nothing about the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and then not saying that these three are one. It just says, for there are three that testify. Man, I'm sure glad they made a, a Bible that's easier for us to understand taking out a whole lot of doctrine, but it's not on purpose. Turn to Jeremiah 17. We'll close there. While you're turning to Jeremiah 17, let me just read you some verses that are completely left out. I'm going to read Acts 8.37. Now, you turn your NIV Bible, there's, there's no Acts 37. There's an Acts, 30, uh, there's an Acts 8.36 and there's an Acts 8.38. But it's literally gone. No, Acts 8.37. Is that an accident, Brother Tony? No. That's on purpose. Acts 8.37 says, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It's an important verse. Matthew 18.11. Completely omitted by the NIV uh, uh, version. I hate to even call it a version. Jesus' own words says, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Completely gone. Completely taken out. I, I'm not not changed. I mean, I mean, there's a verse 10 and a verse 12. They literally had to take the time to say, yeah, we don't want that in there. Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Completely omitted. says, And Jesus answered and said to him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Man, I bet Satan loved that they took that verse out. Right. We could go on all day long. The blasphemy is endless. Satan. Satan loves the NIV. Right. He loves it. Sure. Any Bible that is not the Word of God, he loves it. Anybody, and you say, well, there's so much truth there. Look, I believe somebody can get saved with an NIV. People don't agree with me. Uh, it, 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 uh, if, if somebody believes in their heart in God and, and believes in Jesus, you can get saved. I, I, 100%. And you can say, well, there's so, there's so much truth in the NIV. Look, look. <coughs> there's so much truth in what Satan told Eve. But just enough lie to mess mankind completely over. Think about that for a minute. Amen. I serve a God that makes no mistakes. I serve a God that keeps his promises. I serve a God that I can put my trust in. I don't, I don't have to worry about the foundation that I'm standing on. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. We'll close here. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he should be like the 
the, the heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is, the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh, <coughs> but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit." Put our trust in the word of God, man. We're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. We're going to start putting our trust in what man does and takes away from the word of God. And all of a sudden, we're going to have a whole lot of problems. The deity of Christ is taken out. The hell taken out. Anything with homosexuality taken out. If the Lord stays his coming, just imagine the theme Bibles that we're going to see in 20 or 30 years. Wow. Wow, I know we've come a long ways. Uh, um, um, men in girls' locker rooms, and that's like somehow applauded in, the, in our media. <coughs> we just find these ridiculous things that good is bad and bad is good. What's that mean? Signs of the time. Signs of the times. You said they were saying that 200 years ago. I know. They're saying that in the Lord's day. Amen. Paul was saying that. The disciples were preaching it. And it is more the, 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 the last days today than it ever has been. Right. And the Lord could stay as coming another 500 years. We don't know. But man, it sure does wax worse and worse. I thank God that we have a foundation. We have a word of God. I thank God for our King James Bible. Let's close in a word of prayer. Thank you, God, for your word and the power of it. Lord, help us to, 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 to crave it. Help us, Lord, to, to literally meditate upon it. Make it our all in all. Make it our standard for living, not just what the...